Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, okay, so here's here's a theory. Hear me out, okay? So we're about to see Riri Williams make her debut in uh, Wakanda Forever, and then there'll be a Disney Plus series coming out uh, with the character. And this is all kind of in the line of uh, Disney. It, it, it feels to me like Disney is prepping up the Young Avengers. We've got, you know, uh, Kate over there. We've got, uh, we've, we've had Miss Marvel, Kamala. Now we've got uh, Riri. We, we've got these, these, Teen characters that they're they're introducing into the mix. Hell, that with one of the Loki variants, they could probably get a teen Loki in there as well. I, I just it seems like that's where they're going. And if you're Disney, this makes sense. You you know you you probably are thinking to yourself, you know, you've had a lot of success marketing kind of teen heroes, teen characters, uh, which they have. Whether it's the High School Musical crap or the the zombies uh, whatever crap or the other crap, Descendants crap. Disney has done a, a effective job making money out of kind of teen drama, teen shows like this. So totally get why they're doing it for Marvel. It is a smart business move why they're doing it for Marvel. They made money other places. They own Marvel. They could put two and two together. Makes complete sense. But Riri Williams, I, you know, I'm calling it now. We have a lot of people have been focused on Nemur. Uh, but uh, in Wakanda Forever, we're going to see this character. and We're going to start to see a lot of commentary about how much Riri Williams sucks. It's coming. You know, you, you know, it's coming, uh, but here's, here's, okay. So here's my interesting kind of weird theory. Um, let me first go back to the comic Riri, forget about the, the TV version and everything. You, you have the comic version of Riri and when Riri, if the name is hard to say over and over again, it sounds bad, bad, I'm getting tongue tied. Um, when this character came out, it was during Brian Michael Bendis's Iron Man run. And basically, he took over Iron Man, and then just a couple issues into it, it wasn't long, he kills Iron Man, and basically he has this character he'd been developing in the background. When I say developing in the background, I mean for like one issue. Uh, Riri uh, come in and become the new Iron Man for a while, and we had hologram Tony Stark, and then we eventually brought uh, you know Tony back to life, and uh, that that part that was kind of stupid that how that was done. Uh, but anyway. This was during his uh, also uh, series uh, Civil War II, where Captain Marvel basically killed him, uh, Tony Stark. Anyway, so this is where Riri came into the picture. And uh, the, com the people hated the character. They hated the character for a few reasons. Uh, one, I think they, they thought, hey, you're getting a superstar writer. And Bendis was less of a superstar at that point. He drug the X-Men through the mud. And I think his, his name was not nearly as strong as it was when he was doing Avengers. But... Uh, people are excited to see, you know, a quote unquote superstar team uh, coming on to Iron Man. They were, they, you know, they want to see Iron Man by the, by Iron Man. <laughs> That's what they wanted. And so the idea that we quickly killed off Iron Man and did so in an event that was not good. Now, you know, in the grand scheme of things, Civil War II is starting to look like, uh, you know, Shakespeare compared to some of the <laughs> recent events, but still was not received well. I guess the best way to put it. And this is also during the time frame when they're trying to push the Inhumans and uh, they're, they're making Captain Marvel the most power, you know, popular character in the whole world, in the comics, and a bunch of things that just were the opposite of what any fan at the time was, was you know, wanting to read or really to accept. And it just, it was, you know, you could do a couple of those changes. They, they just shot all of them at once. They sprayed their changes all over everyone's face and nobody liked that. The, the Marvel Bukaki era was was not a popular one. So uh, Riri was hated. There were plenty of videos on you know dissecting the comics and, and everything else with the character. And then uh, Bendis leaves, and then a little bit of time goes by, and Eve Ewing, who uh, really didn't have a lot of you know credits in comics, comes into the picture and does an Ironheart book. And what you'll notice is there's you'll see a lot of videos, a lot of commentary if you go back in the, the Wayback Machine and look at it about how e-viewing, you know, who is this person, why they, they didn't come from comics, what are they doing in comics, but you see very little about Ironheart, and you see very little about the comics themselves, and there's a reason for that. The comics weren't bad. They weren't great. They weren't for me. Um, I still stand by the long-established, uh, you know, <laughs> point of view I've given on this channel that I really don't want to see, you know, family characters, tons and tons of characters of these heroes. I think it's special for there to be one Iron Man and one Batman and one Flash and one Spider-Man. And, you know, it's, it's not about the person inside the mask, 
But when you have like 20, 30, you know, we've got the Flash core, and we've got the Spider-Man core, and we've got the Spider-Man, we've got like all the, it, it lessens, it cheapens the characters, not enhances them. For me, your mileage may vary, whatever, that's, that's your business. But for me, the more you add, the, the worse it gets. So that, I was not excited to see Riri. Um, I do like, uh, I like Rhodey War Machine, uh, that's about it. Although in fairness, of all the characters who could create their, uh, like a legion of, you know, a little, little family group, Iron Man makes probably the most sense. Because arguably, Tony Stark being a weapons maker and in his past life and everything else, you know, you do wonder, like, why would why is Tony Stark fooling around with uh, West Coast Avengers or Force Works or whatever he's up gets up to? And why doesn't he just create the Iron Legion and get a bunch of close friends and, like, have, you know, 20 people in Iron Man suits run around like the Green Lantern Corps? That would probably make some sense. But regardless, we fit his character. So I think yeah, I think he he makes the most sense to do this with, but still not a fan. But the e-viewing series was not bad. It was written fairly well. A character was, you know, they, they took parts of uh, the character's personality and really rounded it out. And, you know, again, not, not a comic for me, not really something I'm interested in, but, you know, I would be lying if I said it was a bad comic. And the people who do say it's a bad comic that I have seen um, clearly haven't read the comic, did not read it. They just, they don't like e-viewing, they don't like Riri, and they, they don't like, you know, the comic. The comic was written... I mean, I think the, the, the biggest criticism you could give it is there was, there was, you know, in the grand scheme of things, nothing special that went on in it, which is a pretty bad insult, to be honest, but the character is written fine, which brings me to my theory. Um, when people rejected Riri, when people talked about, you know, how much they hated the character, you immediately got into the social media Twitter war of, you're a racist. No, you're, yo, I'm not. Yes, you are. Bigot. You know, all this kind of stuff. That, that's where it, it devolved into. But I think that uh, people were arguing over the wrong thing. The problem wasn't Riri, maybe, you know, might, might have been in your opinion. The problem was Bendis. If you look, I mean, who's putting the words in Riri's mouth? And if you go back and you read those original Iron Man issues where Riri first appeared, the character is insufferable. Like, even the most diehard Riri fan, if you force them to read those pages, and just like I said, I don't think the haters of Ewing's series actually read it, I don't think the uh, stands for Ironheart actually read the Bendis comic either. Just to, let me be clear. I think the people who tend to argue this the loudest don't actually do any of their own work. But if you read those pages, the Bendis pages, character sucks. She is written to be obnoxious, like like uh, a completely unlikable character. Not just the intro, but the entire uh, kind of the going to what she went to. Did she go to Latvernia or was that a anyway? Go, invaded another country. Get, like the the whole thing was just hack writing by a mile. Now. I know some of you, um, you know, are comic pros listening to this, and you might go, you know, ah, there he is shitting on Bendis again. Please go read those pages. Honestly, this is not his finest hour. You know, I, I think Bendis doing his Jessica Jones series, great. I think his Defender series, it came much, much later. Actually, during the period where people said he was burned out, was not bad, pretty good. His Avengers work, you know, was, was pretty solid. Didn't like his X-Men work, but, I mean, you could see... You know, his his biggest fault was writing all the characters the same. So in fairness, you know, for Ironheart, he definitely tried to come up with a different, you know, voice for that character. But oh my God, the voice sucked. So my premise is, what people actually dislike is not Ironheart. It's not a young black, uh, I think, did they did they make it canon that she was partially autistic? I thought so. Or, or at least Asperger's, I, I think. But anyway... That's not what you dislike. You dislike Bendis' voice in that character. You dislike that writing. And then that got me, then like it's a door opened up in my mind of how many of these fights that we've had over the last eight years or so have nothing really to do with the characters. You know, we, we talk, people like to battle about, you know, you're a racist if you uh, don't like Miles Morales or whatever it happens to be. But or, or or hell, the LGBTQ characters that come out that, that you know, literally and figuratively. How much of 
Iceman and all the dislike around kind of that whole move and everything else. How much of that is about the character? And how much of that is about the writer putting the words in that character's mouth? Now, I know what you're going to say, you know, like, duh, this isn't a big revelation. Obviously, the characters are products of the writers. But when you look at the anger that went on over Ironheart, a lot of people named Iron, they named Riri. Riri sucks. Riri is awful. Riri wasn't the problem. Riri was just a cipher for the person who was creating the, the, the dialogue and the words for Riri, and that was Bendis. And when we saw Riri written by somebody else, in this case Ewing, the character was a lot better. Again, not, not, not a modern-day classic, and some jackass is going to come into the comments, and I'm going to delete it, going, Perch, Riri is the best-written character in the history of all comics. Just shut the fuck up. But I think, I, I mean... This is it's interesting when you think of this entire you're a racist kind of dialogue that went out over Riri, where the problem is uh, not racism at all. Bendis is a uh, you know older white dude. He's the problem. Just just something to think about. I also, in case you need reminding, do this as as a favor. Go find the comics. Wherever you need to find comics at, I'm, I'm, I've given up, but hopefully at your local comic shop, but whatever you got to do, go find the comics and then just read a couple pages from the uh, Bendis Iron Man series featuring Riri. And then go read a couple pages from the Eve Ewing Ironheart limited series that came about two years later. And just, it, it's for all intents and purposes, it's two completely different characters. And I, this is my uh, my Ironheart challenge to you, you know, on the eve of the Black Panther Wakanda Forever featuring Namur. Try, people are thinking I'm doing a bit there. That's that's how they're that's how the actor is pronouncing the name Namur. Namur, Namur n n anyway, you got it. Um, go check it out. It it you will you will discover that. that Maybe we could dodge the entire racism argument completely, because it is a red herring in this case, and get to the actual problem, which is the, 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 character, the character was written awful, and that's what people hate. Anyway, let me know. This is my crazy thought. Half-baked. I haven't had my coffee or uh, anything else this morning. I haven't gotten into, uh, you know, I haven't gotten into the heroin just yet. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for listening.